Winter was coming to the island of Sodor. The morning ground was covered in crisp white frost. Thomas and Emily were happily chuffing up and down the line. Thomas was enjoying pulling Annie and Clarabelle. He thought he was doing a grand job. But Emily had other ideas. She thought he could be doing an even grander job. So Emily decided to help Thomas by telling him what he was doing wrong. When she saw him puffing down the branch line, she cried out. Slow down. You're going too fast and bumping your passengers. Later, Emily saw Thomas by a bridge. He had stopped to take on water and was talking to some children. Stop talking to the children, said Emily. You are working and they will make you late. I'm never late, said Thomas huffily. There's always a first time, said Emily cheerfully, and she puffed away. Thomas was cross. He loved talking to children and thought Emily was being a big bossy buffers. Annie and Clarabelle agreed. I am never going to listen to Emily ever, ever again, said Thomas. So there. The next morning, a sleepy Thomas had to leave Tidmouth Sheds bright and early. He was to collect some freight cars from the quarry and take them to the docks. Later that morning, Sir Topham had arrived with a new weather report. There is snow on the way. You must all have your snow plows fitted. Excuse me, sir, said Emily, but Thomas has already left for the quarry. Then you must find Thomas and tell him Sir Topham Hatt wants him to wear his snow plow. So Emily puffed away to get her snow plow fitted. The workman fixed Emily's snow plow on in no time at all, and she set off to find Thomas. Emily was very happy. She was looking forward to telling him what to do. Thomas was taking on water at Maithwaite Station. Emily puffed up in front of him. She blew her whistle. But Thomas didn't say hello. She just wants to boss me again, grouched Thomas. Thomas, she called. You must go and get your snowplow fitted. Thomas could hear what Emily was saying, but pretended he couldn't. He thought he was being very clever. So Emily tooted even louder again. You must go and get your snowplow fitted, she cried. Bother snowplows, said Thomas, and bother Emily. Anyway, the weather is perfectly fine, and he puffed away as fast as he could. Oh, Thomas! Thomas delivered the freight cars to the quarry. Then set off to collect cream from the dairy. Everything was going well. But soon, the clear blue sky was eaten away by dark gray clouds. They look like snow clouds to me, said his driver. And he was right. Soon, big flakes of white snow began to fall. Then the snow gathered into drifts and covered the tracks. Cinders and ashes, cried Thomas, as his wheels began to slip. Snow fell all over the island. Emily cut safely through the drifts with her snowplow. Thomas will be in trouble now. Emily was right. Thomas was working harder and harder, but he had to go more and more slowly. We can't go on, said his driver. Thomas pulled to a slow, sad stop by a signal box. And his driver went for help. It snowed and snowed. 
Thomas felt very cold and twice as miserable. Then he heard the sound of an engine. Thomas was delighted until he saw who his rescuer was. It was Emily. I told you to go and get your snowplow. Now look what's happened. Thomas was still cross. You should say sorry for bossing me about. I am sorry, said Emily. Sorry you didn't listen to me. Emily and Thomas chopped into Tidmouth's shed. Sir Topham Hatt was waiting. He did not look happy. Emily, you must take Thomas to get his snowplow fitted at once, said Sir Topham Hatt sternly. Thomas, you must learn to listen. Thomas felt bad. He didn't know it was Sir Topham Hatt who wanted him to wear his snowplow. Emily felt bad, too. She didn't like seeing Thomas in trouble. I am sorry, sir, she said. I forgot to tell Thomas it was your idea. You mean I have two engines that don't listen, boomed Sir Topham Hatt. Well, I never. Emily, you must take Thomas to get his snowplow fitted at once. Soon the work was finished, and Thomas was wearing his snowplow. Thank you for owning up, said Thomas. You are a very good friend. That's all right, said Emily. You are a good friend, too. But next time, if you want to stay out of trouble, just do what I say. Even Thomas had to laugh. Thank <laughs> you.